everyone to our August PL Andres Working Group All Hands. We have a packed agenda today. We have a very short working group update, just sharing um, some of the updates on KPIs, highlights, and our OKRs for the quarter. And then we have lots of spotlights um, from Boost, Retrieval Dashboard, SB Reputation Working Group, uh, and a ton of others. I will not list all of them. And then we have a deep dive on the Phil Dev Summits happening in Singapore and Iceland in September, which is only one month away, which is super exciting. Um, and then we should have some hopeful time for Q&A and other questions. So as a quick reminder, the PL Engines Working Group is a gathering of teams uh, working across the PL network where we are motivated by building better technology for the internet so that we can secure a robust framework for future breakthroughs, um, starting with a lot of the amazing Web3 projects um, that have come out of Protocol Labs over the years um, and are really spending a chunk of time on things like IPFS, LibPP, and Filecoin, which we'll heal, hear updates from in a second. Our mission is to scale and unlock new breakthroughs for these projects by driving breakthroughs in protocol utility and capability, scaling network native research and development, and stewarding and growing open source projects, networks, and communities. We have a whole ton of different working groups. We're excited to welcome the data programs uh, team to our working group, um, sharing some of their awesome updates, uh, expediting data onboarding to the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, our strategy stays very consistent um, with a first focus on helping critical systems be stewarded and grow over time, um, growing the amazing network of teams that are contributing towards these awesome protocols, and then two uh, main, main pillars, one around robust storage and retrieval, so great to have the data programs folks um, you know, joining us on that side as well, um, and then around compute over Filecoin state and data, um, building on things like FVM to add new layer two capabilities, additional chain space, and compute over the large amounts of data stored in Filecoin. Um, a couple of updates here. Um, you may see that we had uh, updated this to a check mark last time. IPC M2 officially exists on Filecoin mainnet, which is super exciting. Um, Ceiling as a service is also out there in the wild, um, getting used by a ton of folks, which is really, really exciting to see. Um, and great progress uh, across the board on Saturn, Lotus Miner uh, Station, and gearing up for both IPC M3 and the next Filecoin network upgrade, NV21. Um, now we can do okay updates, starting with Lauren. Thanks, Molly. Um, on keeping critical systems running, growing, releasing, scaling, and secure, um, since we're almost at halfway in the quarter, most things are yellow. Um, on improving the APF IPFS gateway debuggability work on track, there is a um, MVP out, and then iterations are in progress. With respect to landing three high-value FIPS, um, there's discussions underway for NV21, which will be um, planned for early November. So we'll see what actually ends up landing in that. Um, on the five community bootstrap nodes, we're currently at zero additional, but there's talks for two others, and we are on track on moving um, users off of chain.love. And then on Filecoin chain robustness, we've launched the state profiling tool, so that is green, and we have... Um, two new disputers and two new fault detectors moving towards that KR. And there's an amazing cinematic masterpiece from Tippy Flitz on how to use the disputers that I recommend everyone check out. Steve, go ahead. Thanks, yeah. So for hyperscaling and accelerating the talent and teams contributing to the PL stack, these KRs are all on track. A few details, the um, Crypto Econ Lab has been updating their sales framework to better understand prospective clients. Uh, and so they've been going deeper into protocol design, mechanism design, simulation, et cetera, with these clients. And they've sent two work proposals to prospective clients uh, last, last week. So that's great to see. You know, congrats to DRAN, which have landed one of their Lighthouse customers called Proof of Play. And then on this Helia IPFS effort, this is four work streams across Boxo, Kubo, Helia, JS, the P2P, and Golub P2P. And those are all progressing in, in different ways. So, so far, you know, on track for this objective. Thanks. Go ahead, Matthew. Awesome. I think Matthew is at a team summit oh. today and I soon is out of office. So I am jumping in to help out here Sweet. Um, on the scale data onboarding and CDN speed retrievals to drive super linear adoption with Lighthouse users. Um, there are two partners uh, lined up for when code is ready for our new project motion, easy Filecoin integration tooling work that's happening across teams, which is really exciting. Um, there's work in progress on unsealing fixes, um, and so we're we're on track for that one. 
Um, for Saturn, the on track there as well, team super close to meeting both latency and correctness goals for M1, which would um, kind of allow us to uh, start serving that IPFS.io gateway traffic in prod, not just the mirrored traffic that we've been serving for the past couple of months. Uh, and then finally, dot storage onboards 100% of uh, historic uploads to W3Up. This is also on track. Um, these are in Falcon Plus deals with a good SLA for um, you know, the future time to data in Falcon deals um, landed as well. Um, for number four, upgrading Falcon with new L2 capabilities and chartable chain space, um, we have over 11 million fill TVL, um, which is super exciting. So making good progress, over 200 um, K wallets and uh, just, I think just breaking 2000 unique contracts. So good progress on our FBM adoption um, and capabilities. Um, on, we are, we're still, I think at one end-to-end -end aggregator, but they have also in, uh, done some of the IPLD uh, reachability FIP work. Um, so making, making good progress on some of the later components of these FBM capability sides of things. Um, for uh, IPC, uh, we are uh, on track for a Fenderment based IPC implementation. Um, uh, right now, three dev teams have expressed interest um, in this, you know, prominent early access dev teams um, and a few more in the works scoping. And then last but not least, uh, there is a live COD testnet that a number of people were building on. Sorry to seal someone's spotlight thunder. A uh, number of people were building on during ECC uh, two weeks ago, which is super exciting. Um, and they're still in early days. They're, they're not yet advertising people to join the network in terms of number of nodes, um, but we're actively um, submitting early jobs uh, and um, starting to run additional uh, ML workloads on this new testnet. So uh, I think we're on track for um, some, some really exciting momentum in Q4. All right, handing off to IPFS. Yeah, I'll take this. Um, so right, IPFS, we're making the web work peer to peer with content addressing so that content can be verified independent of the provider or the transport method. In terms of some of our KPIs, um, yeah, no, no major call outs here regarding the public IPFS DHT and its network size and performance. Yeah, you know, no major shifts. We also are looking at IPNI uh, performance, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, there's these graphs plus a lot more under ProBlab.io. Uh, but yeah, nothing going to get into this time around. But these are some of the metrics we look at. In terms of the next slide, uh, you know, this was a quieter month with events and vacations, but there's a few things we want to update on. One is Kubo 022 did ship. So this includes IPIP 412, which allows signaling for block order um, in cars on trustless gateways. So that's out there. We have the newest Golib P2P, which when measured in Kubo was reducing the number of dials by 30% with low to no uh, latency impact. Um, and there are a host of regression fixes, which is unfortunate, but, but also some important security patches. So if you are a Kubo user, please update. Uh, we've been talking, I think we've mentioned it before, there's been a major, a lot of work going on behind the scenes for IPFS Companion, uh, updating it to use the MV3 you know, model of new web extensions. Uh, so that's in our final beta right now. So please try it out. We'd appreciate any feedback because when we push that live into the Chromium web store, that does reach 60 to 70,000 monthly active users. So want to get that right before we do so. And we will do a spotlight to get deeper in on this project once it's actually fully shipped. But this is setting the stage for a Kubo list companion, not needing to have a Kubo instance running um, in order for companion to work well and enhance the browser. Uh, on the Helia front, a lot more examples, even more examples have been added covering popular frameworks, bundlers, and testing tools. And the Foreverland group, uh, they're, they're a, they have a pinning service and a, gate, uh, a gateway. Uh, they've been added to the web UI and the pinning service compliance suite. So another option there. Um, for folks, and you know, we've mentioned ProBlab.io before, but that website is launched and fully announced the version one of it, I should say. Some things that are coming up, we're, we're overdue on some communication regarding the Kademlia DHT roadmap, and also work just happening generally in IPFS, particularly around areas like HTTP debugability and supporting large blocks. We will get those public comms out next month before the, or the, this, sorry, this month, or yeah, before the next all hands, I should say. And on the, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk before about the gateway conformance work. We will be wrapping a bow up on that so that there is a public dashboard so that you can see various gateway implementations and gateway instances in terms of how conformant they are. So that will be coming out. That OKR item 
regarding allowing content that's being authored in the browser to be retrievable from nodes like IPFS.io Gateway. Uh, we're really pushing forward on that. And we should have some good progress to share for the next update. And um, I guess the other thing I will call out is, you know, there's good work happening in libp2p, enabling uh, libp2p with HTTP, and we'll be adding that into Kubo so that you can hit the HTTP trustless gateway API, uh, but doing that over uh, libp2p if you would so like. Um, so yeah, good stuff and more to come. Thank you. Let's switch to libp2p. Thanks, Steve. libp2p is a modular network stack for P2P protocols, and it's striving to be the library of all Web3 products. Uh, next slide, please. Um, normally, we show our KPIs at this point, but we're going to skip them again this month because we have a whole bunch of new perf and interop metrics coming. And so look for this September all hands to have a new revamped KPI slide. So on to libp2p highlights. Um, like I said, lots of new perf interop metrics. We've got new dashboards ready to be made public. Um, there's Steve just touched on it. There's an experimental implementation of libp2p plus HTTP and an exploratory uh, refactor of IPNI. If you want to try it out, ping Marco. Um, on the community front, we've replaced one of the bootstrappers with one written in Rust. Um, we have a new community contributed uh, Kotlin implementation of Rust libp2p, and we're seeing lots of community contributions in JS and Rust. So the community engagement is going up and to the right and constantly getting better. I think Marco is going to do a spotlight on our presence at IETF, so we can skip that. Uh, center column here, we have some sneak previews of the new cool dashboards. And I wanted to call out um, that we're getting lots of love for JS libp2p on Twitter. Um, with regards to implementations, <clears throat> two things to highlight. Lots of um, security fixes, <clears throat> not lots, but important security fixes were made in Golib P2P recently. Um, and there was a rewrite of Quick in Rust P2P to use Quinn. I've been assured that this gets us close to a 10x improvement on uh, Quick uh, throughput connections. So um, big improvement there. And really, that's pretty much it. I think uh, the big call out here is that we're getting lots of community con contributions, lots of engagement, and um, the libp2p community is growing. Um, our last community call had representatives from eight different implementations of libp2p on it. So on to Filecoin. The Filecoin is a crypto-powered, uh, decentralized storage network built for efficient, robust foundation for humanity's most important information. Uh, quickly, we are still a very large storage network. We are at 11.19 uh, exabytes uh, of the storage capacity uh, in the network. Many of them has a lot of data, uh, which we are now at 1.3 exabytes uh, data stored in Filecoin. We are uh, constantly reaching more than five pips per day uh, from data onboarding perspective. Again, great job for data programs or any community member are, uh, you know, onboarding data clients to store and data on Filecoin. Next slide, really quick. Uh, some quick highlights. Uh, uh, first one, Lotus just published our uh, of like July release, uh, which is out with a lot of improvement uh, for ease RPC service provider, uh, storage uh, provider, and so on and so forth. One of the highlights that I want to call out is we officially launched the brand new slasher and distributor services. These are essential network services to maintain network security. Uh, you know, uh, Filecoin has two mechanisms, which is one. Uh, one of them is consensus fault. The other one is dispute window post, which are crit uh, critical part for the Filecoin as approval storage consensus. And we launched services to allow users to run those, detect the bad actors, call them out. And by doing so, not only you're securing the network, but you're also getting rewarded uh, by, by by doing so, and then the resource for running these services are very low cost. There's a masterpiece uh, done by TP that's shared in the Lotus announcement cha uh, channel just this morning. Please go check it out. Uh, call to action here is if you care about Filecoin uh, security as a probable storage network, please run one. And if you know anyone that's participating in the Filecoin and care about your health, tell them this exists now and ask them to run one as well. Right now, as of today, we have four active slasher and 10 active distributor in the network. By the way, four months ago, we only have one slasher in the network, which kind of is concerning, but now we're increasing that amount. And 
I'm here uh, to give everyone a challenge, right? Can we try to get that, that number tripled by the end of this quarter? That would be amazing. So please help us spread the news. Uh, next up, yes, we finally got a date for the next network upgrade for Falcon. It's code name as Watermelon because it's supposed to be very juicy. Uh, it's happening in November. Uh, Quantum are still evaluating all the fits and uh, figure out the priority and the scope. Uh, some of the potential highlights are, as mentioned, since the pull wrap. Uh, we are also working actively on direct data onboarding, which from a long-term perspective, we are hoping uh, with FEVM launch, we can have more dynamic, different storage market evolve off our Queen protocol. That's why we want to slowly, uh, you know, enable that and less and enabling basic storage market other than F05. Uh, the first step will be allowing data to be directly put into the sectors without sending a public storage deal via the F05. And a short-term impact for that is yes, storage provider can save a lot of gas uh, for PSD message, which is the most costly uh, part for data onboarding today. So I'm hoping everyone would love that. Uh, we are working with the DRAN team to slowly switch into the DRAN QuickNet. Thank you, Patrick, for offering the implementation for all this. Uh, we are also considering to allow SPs to manage their post deadline so that we can reduce the human operational DevOps cost for SPs and they can spend money some, uh, somewhere else. There's a lot of tips ongoing. I have a full list of the links uh, added there. Please join FIP discussions, provide feedback. And if you want to contribute building Falcon protocol, let me know. We can use more cat typing power. Uh, and another update, Field Dev Summit is officially settled and it's coming. I will have more details to share later. Uh, next one is like I take it as challenges, but also opportunities. With as mentioned last time, there's a very interesting conversation going on on how to uh, how we evolve the Fall Queen Plus as a principle, but also the programs to run to incentive useful storage for, for Fall Queen Network, but also incent provide incentives for people to building tools to ease the data onboarding process uh, onto the Fall Queen storage network. In the conversation, there's now actually a lot of interesting conversation on like, what's the Fall Queen storage network? What's the Fall Queen's mission? People have different opinions on what a useful storage network is. Some people think, hey, useful storage network is when you have the demand where you have client to pay for storage service. And some people like me, I would actually see Falcon as a decentralized storage network that can offer very cheap storage for you know, data set, potentially has low funding to pay for very expensive storage service. And I love the fact that we have mechanisms to support that you know, free storage like native network incentives. Um, to, again, to me, Falcon is like three years old now. A lot of new people has joined the network. Everyone has different, there are very dynamic business models today in the Falcon network. People have different opinions and I love that we are having this vibrant conversation in the community. So if you have something to share, please join the conversation. And the whole goal is to build a better Falcon storage network together. So please, um, please comment if you have any, if you have any thoughts. Awesome, super well said. Um, moving on to our spotlights, and we have a ton of them. So please help us keep it nice and snappy. Starting with Boost V two. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here, and I'm here to share a bit more about Boost V two, which was released just a few weeks ago. Um, the main change that you'll see in this version is that we've replaced the DAP store with a local index directory, which is powered by Yugabyte DB. And essentially the local index directory manages and stores deal data indices for storage providers. So as you can see in the diagrams on the right, hopefully it's not too small. Um, there's information basically that maps CID to piece offset as well as sector details for the SP. So when one of their clients comes to request um, a particular CID, on the boost side, the lookups happen via the local index directory and then content can be located and retrieved. Um, there's lots of benefits that we introduce as well. So SPs now have visibility into their storage health and they can identify flagged pieces which require either unsealing or re-indexing. So um, SPs can have better storage management um, services here. And it's also the first step we're taking for horizontal scalability for SPs, especially as more and more SPs are storing client data and their um, power grows in the network. And we've also removed the dependency on DAG store, which lots of storage providers are running into issues with. 
Um, so thanks everyone for the great work. Shout out to Dirk, Anton, Mayank, and the rest of the Bedrock team for all the help with this. And you can read more details in the links provided. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Super, super exciting. Over to Shinan for Retrieval Dashboard. Hello. So Retrieval Dashboard, the goal for Retrieval Dashboard is to get an over, overall idea of how Filecoin's storage providers are performing in terms of retrievability and visualizing a nice public dashboard. On um, how it works, uh, we have been running uh, retrieval workers from five, actually those are actually coming from five different reputation working group members. Mona joining. Um, it covers, it's actually retrieving from different places across the globe, including China, mainland area. More information about reputation working group in the next slide. Um, and it is doing lightweight HTTP graphing and best wide retrieval. Um, the major use case for it right now is for field plus program quality check on um, large data set issues um, so that the notary can do their due diligence by visiting the dashboard. It also offers a per client view. So like existing clients like Solana, Internet Archive, they can just use this dashboard to see how well their store providers are doing in terms of retrievability. And for new clients, they can look at this dashboard to see um, whether a new provider is good at um, retrieval. Also for store providers, they can take a look at the logs. So to understand how and to troubleshoot any retrieval failure and see how well they do retrieval from other places um, across the globe. So there are a few links below, which links to the repo of this dashboard, as well as retrieval worker and the public dashboard. So feel free to look at it. Cool. Thanks. So cool. And also awesome to see all of the metrics in the Phil Plus program uh, increasing in terms of percent retrievability over time as well. So it's it's working. It's happening. Uh, Caro, tell us about the SP Reputation Working Group. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Shinan, for uh, the retrieval dashboard uh, overview. So the retrieval bots, the five members that Shinan uh, uh, talked about, they are five out of the 12 members in the ST Re uh, Reputation Working Group. Uh, the other members include Lassie from Bedrock, Starboard, Phil Scan, Phil Rep, uh, Ground Control, and Phil Fox. So a bunch of us currently contribute to the reputation working group. Uh, currently, there are 60 plus unique metrics uh, collecting, you know, reachability data, time to first buy, retrieval methods, uh, retrieval success rates, as well as, you know, non-retrieval uh, related, such as location uh, and blocks mined. So both on-chain and off-chain data around the SP reputation. Uh, right now, the reputation database is on um, Polybase. We are super happy to be able to collaborate with Polybase, which is our PLN, uh, you know, uh, company. And uh, right now, we have a bunch of FBM aggregators. Uh, pretty interesting using our reputation database. Uh, one of them being Lighthouse, who is already uh, testing on the reputation re uh, database. Uh, long, the long-term goal of the reputation uh, working group is to become a DAO, where as you can see in the diagram in the right, we have kind of a tokenomics mechanism uh, for the contributors to earn DAO tokens uh, and for the customers of the database to pay in DAO tokens to access the data. Uh, that part is still under development. Uh, right now, V2 uh, is launching with the open data hack end of August. And it is going to be free to access for uh, for now before we have the tokenomics figured out. So feel free to message me on uh, Filecoin Slack at Carol if you want access to the working group database. Thank you. Super cool. Thanks so much for sharing. I think we have an async update here. Hello, everyone. This is Steph from Sentinel speaking. Today, I'll be talking about Mercury which is Sentinel's latest initiative where we try to provide a service with a user-friendly API, serving both historical and monitoring data that Sentinel offers. Mercury Fill is the first client we created for the Mercury project to validate our idea. It is written in Python and was designed to help analysts and research scientists get their hands on historical Filecoin chain analytics data using tools they're most familiar with, such as Pandas and Jupyter, both within the Python ecosystem. Mer Mercury Fill is available to download from the PyPI registry and can be used by people with a protocol.ai email address. The slide also shows a GIF with a demo of Mercury Fill in a Colab notebook, Google's hosted Jupyter Notebook service. 
I've included a link in the slide for you to try out. When you do, and if you do have time to share some feedback, please do so, so we can better improve this service for you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Steph, for the remote presentation. Over to RG for data cap quality. Thanks, Molly. Um, so um, this uh, we more, uh, more recently we've been working on defining what quality usage of data cap means. Um, right now, it's um, a combination of three tools. We're looking at retrievability, uh, uh, deal distribution, which is captured by the CID checker bot, as well as the risk and reputation scores, which is currently under development. So you can go to quality.datacapstats.io to play with this graph. But um, as you can see, um, as you know, Shinan mentioned, retrievability has been increasing uh, and improving. So we're seeing some upticks there. There's uh, still a chunk of data that is um, unknown. Um, so we are working on uh, bringing more insight into what kind of, uh, you know, how data cap is being used, but uh, highly encourage everyone to check out this website and support us in our efforts uh, to define quality uh, usage of data cap. Thank you. Awesome. So useful to be collecting good metrics here. Ali, tell us more about LilyPad. Hi everyone, I'm Ali. Uh, I've been helping to build LilyPad, which is developing the infrastructure for a trustless distributed compute network on uh, IPC uh, that will enable this internet scale data processing, AI, ML, and other arbitrary computation uh, from the Filecoin blockchain, basically. Uh, so it'll also unleash this idle processing power and unlock a new marketplace for data and compute uh, via some of our SPs and anyone else that has spare CPUs and GPUs. GPUs that they want to earn money from. Uh, so Lilypad leverages uh, Bakuyao under the hood. Uh, you can kind of think of Lilypad as the incentivized Web3 version of Bakuyao. So kind of like uh, Filecoin leverages these crypto economic incentives uh, to act as a persistence layer for IPFS. Uh, Lilypad does the same for Bakuyao. So while they share some code bases, they are kind of completely different as well. Uh, so we recently released an early test net that you can try out as well, which is called Lala Chooser. You can either uh, use this from the CLI or you can go ahead and use this from a smart contract. And we are also working really hard in the background at the moment to release an IPZ version of IPC, sorry, version of this testnet. We wanted a testnet out for all of these Paris events though. Uh, so we kind of rushed one out in the meantime that people could use and play around with. Uh, so technically Lilypad's being built with these deterministic modules. So AI inference uh, modules are currently being enabled with like kind of a payment per job economic model. Obviously we're only on testnet so it's free uh, but the roadmap is firstly to support these deterministic compute jobs and then run non-deterministic game theory being considered in the uh, future uh, so we want your ideas as well tell us what you want us to add and please like us on twitter or x or whatever it's called now uh, and we'd love to hear from you thank you awesome next singularity shillin Thanks, Molly. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to um, briefly introduce Singularity V2. Um, as we know, it, it is the uh, popular data onboarding tool in the network. Uh, the V1 has propelled about 100 paybacks data in the past one year, and we are excited to take this uh, tour even further. So V2 started to test uh, just a week ago. And um, if you want to hear more updates, uh, feel free to join the Singularity V2 channel. The specific benefit of Singularity V2 bring is um, to, uh, uh, to uh, for example, the inline preparation. It could reduce the disk space uh, for the data propellers, but more importantly, the improved deal making and deal preparation module uh, will be served uh, to for the project motion and uh, uh, eventually serve the ISV uh, even uh, even better. And uh, the V2 also add the DL monitoring dashboard to help the user track DL status, which is a highly request requested feature. Uh, shout out to Xinyan, uh, Hannah, Marcy on um, helping uh, the V2 uh, augment it. And if you want to learn more about what V2 will offer, feel free to check out those uh, Gable links and our new dashboard. Thank you. 
That's awesome. I love dashboards. Um, everyone you know, go take a look. And I think this is a hundred, you know, hundred boobs of data. That is probably one of our most uh, high volume onboarding tools in the Falcon network. So great work making it better. Marco, tell us about IETF 117. Hey folks, IETF 117 was in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. Um, the IETF follows many of the same principles we, we value at PL and they've been doing it for 40 years. I think there's a lot to learn from them. And uh, I encourage engineers to attend one of these meetings at some point to see how the standards sausage gets made. Um, I've written some notes and takeaways. It's linked there. And uh, I recommend watching. Oh no, my text didn't properly show up. Uh, I recommend watching Corey Doctorow's, uh, don't play this video, uh, presentation at the Decentralization of the Internet Research Group. Uh, one quote here that I have listed that is hidden behind the video is uh, Corey quoted or said, like all billionaires, Mark Zuckerberg is a policy failure. So if you want to see Corey dunk on the big platforms, uh, I recommend that video. Awesome. We are now over to our deep dive on Phil Dev Summit. Um, Jennifer, do you want to share some more about this awesome uh, two part? gathering uh, for the Falcoin developer community. This is our amazing Pill Dev Summit. Apparently we have an awesome branding set up these days. Uh, this is a two part event uh, that the first part will happen in Singapore only a month away, September 12th to 14th. And the second part is in Iceland, uh, September the 25th to 27th. We are having two part because People building Falcon is literally so many and spread all over the world. And we recognize there are you know challenges for people to all fly to one location. So we are having one in Asia and the other one in Europe and the North America, so that we can gather uh, all the developers, most of the developers who are contributing to Falcon uh, and having our very own and Dev Summit. Uh, the goal here is to build connections, discuss about the protocol, dis uh, discuss about tooling, how we can evolve Falcon protocol, how we can make data onboarding ex experience better, how can we start working on Falcon scalability with IPC, what kind of the use cases there, uh, how can we start you know, with uh, compute over data, how can we start to compute jobs on the data stored on Falcon, and also all the retrieval storage is now we are storage network, you get data in, again, you want to get data out, so uh, we are also having a retrieval check over there. Obviously, we want to engage closely with, with the builders that's building on top of FEM and future quickly building on IPC as well, just to discuss all the data economy and different kind of use cases that can be enabled on Falcon. So having to event, uh, it's a lot uh, and can be a lot of traveling. So uh, the way that we are thinking about this is that uh, we are kicking off all the conversations in the part one, which is the Singapore uh, event, start to gather in the problems, uh, try to brainstorm the ideas on how we can resolve the challenges or the bottlenecks that's existing on the Falcon network today. Uh, the second part, uh, we will be quickly releasing all the discussion happened in the Singapore event uh, to the public so that people can leave comments, engage uh, offline as well. And then in Iceland, we are gonna continue all the amazing conversation, hopefully happen in Singapore and start to align our the future directions, roadmap, and what to build over the next couple of months. Uh, for us, there's also an idea that using this opportunity to hack and then hopefully leading to launches at Lab Week uh, that we can share with the broader community. Uh, because there are two tracks and different, we also realize that there are different audience in, in different locations uh, for the for the Falcon community. So we uh on the rough side, we have uh, track guidelines uh, for folks as shared over here. So in the Singapore track, we'll be focused on, again, for FEM application, application use case like buildings. Again, all the content will be shared online so everyone can have access to that. Uh, we also want to engage with the SP community to talk about toolings and stack, how we can build amazing uh, things for people to provide storage service. Uh, it's a focus in the Singapore because there are going to be a DISPA uh, alongside of our event. Uh, DISPA is a accelerator accelerator program for SPs to join the network. Um, that's why it's there. And in Iceland, we are going to have specific focus on 
uh, FVM runtime development, you know, enable different like uh, runtime on Falcon, like Aqua VM, enable the native Rust, like Watson runtime, so that we can de develop like native actors. We want to talk about how to build scalability solutions, computer over data, and retrieval stories on the network. In both locations, we are also going to talk about how to build toolings to ease the data onboarding into the network, and also how the Falcon protocol development can evolve. And we are also going to have governance track to talk about Falcon Plus fit processes and how we uh, how we want to handle network upgrades in the next couple of months. Um, a lot of things. If you have any ideas on the tracks you want to lead and you uh, it's not listed here, uh, we are opening for tracks. So you will see a huge announcement, I think, later today, very soon, very soon, um, that to announce the Field Dev Summit uh, to the general public as well. Uh, in the website linked here, you can apply uh, for the event, it is a application based event because we want to make sure we are having all the great talent that's focused on development into this event. If you are more like BD, uh, business development, or like, you know, um, marketing folks who want to build the Falcon ecosystem from that, per that perspective, there are Phil Vegas and also in October and also a couple other events that you can join in over there for this event. Again, we are hoping we can have a lot of the developers and talents to join this one. Please submit talks and like tracks that you think can be driving meaningful discussions and uh, uh, takeaways uh, along with other teams. Please help us share the news, tell people to apply. Uh, I know it's only a month away and we really, really want to get the news to as many people as possible. So please, please, please help retreat, share the blog post, just invite people who you think can be valuable for this kind of conversations and tell, tell them about it. And also we are uh, looking for sponsors as well to either sponsor the event or like sponsor individuals who can travel into these, these places. So if you have any connections or you know any people that are willing to sponsor the awesome Falcon Dev Summit, please let you need know. There is a public channel Hashtag field dev summit in all Queen Slack. So joining there, we are all gonna be uh, uh monitoring that channel. I think I covered most of it. I don't know, Molly, do you have anything to add? Nope, I think that was fantastic. Um, looking forward to seeing um, many folks who are excited about making the Falcoin network stronger, better, more capable, and building on top of it, whether that's FVM builders or people who are building layer two networks or people who are augmenting additional tools um, and capabilities around this ecosystem. Super exciting. I'm also pumped for the protocol conversations. Like I am excited to jam with like folks on the Venus and Forest teams about how we can simplify out a really minimal consensus layer and start scaling Filecoin utilizing IPC so we can have regional capacity and data onboarding networks within Filecoin itself. So I think it's gonna be some really exciting conversations and big thanks to everyone here who's helping, um, you know, prep awesome tracks and uh, talks and discussions for that venue. Um, please go ahead and uh, join us there. Uh, start booking your travel because I know time's getting tight and uh, very excited for that venue. And with that, we're at the end of our deep dive. Thank you all for joining. Thank you.